Welcome to this online presentation, giving you an introduction to the annual unit costs of health and social care. First, here's some background. Our first edition was published in 1992, so it's been in circulation for just over 25 years. It's always been funded by the Department of Health, now the Department of Health and Social Care, with small amounts of funding provided by the Department for Education. This slide lists what we will cover in this first presentation. I will first define a unit cost in the context of health and social care and outline why we need them. I'll also touch on our approach to cost estimation, but more about this will be discussed in a later video. Next, I will describe our research activities and give you an overview of what you can find in the volumes, as well as telling you about our growing number of web-based resources. So to answer the first question, what are unit costs and why are they important? Unit costs represent the total expenditure incurred to produce one unit of output. In health and social care, this could be the cost of one hour of a nurse's or GP's time, or an hour of face-to-face -face time with a social worker, or perhaps a speech therapist. It could also be a week in a residential care or nursing home, or the cost of a daycare attendance. Unit costs are important because they enable organisations to assess performance and value for money. In other words, they help achieve the most efficient use of resources. Our approach to cost estimation is grounded in economic theory and is both transparent and flexible. We take a long-run marginal opportunity cost approach. The marginal cost is the cost of supporting one extra client or patient or providing one additional unit of output, for example, an hour of a nurse's time or doctor's consultation. The long run part means that we recognise the financial implications of expansion to the service. For example, to provide additional hospital bed days, more hospitals need to be built, so there is a need to include one-off investments, such as building and land costs. So that we can present an annual cost of these one-off capital investments alongside revenue costs, we take the expected annual return that would have been realised had the value tied up in the capital resource been invested over the life of the building. At the top of this slide, you'll see the aim which guides our work. In summary, this is to improve the quality and breadth of available unit costs by using existing literature and studies. We make sure that our costs are of good quality by applying established cost estimation methods and principles. Throughout the year, we identify where our unit costs could be improved and also identify gaps in information and data sources so that we can calculate new costs. It's also very important to us that we respond to government priorities and policies with appropriate cost data. So how do we find all our information? Our advisory group, who we meet with annually, guides our work and provides valuable leads. This is formed of representatives from the funding bodies, economists from research units, and representatives from the Social Care Institute for Excellence and the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, Sky and NICE in short. We search the literature for new studies and draw information from secondary sources of data, as well as working with organisations to estimate unit costs for specific services. Occasionally, we commission research. Recently, we worked with foundations, the National Body for Home Improvements, who collected information for us on how much time local authority and home improvement agency staff spend on supplying and fitting adaptations. With this information, we were able to calculate the total cost of supplying and fitting stair lifts, level access showers, handrails, as well as room conversions and many more. The work resulted in a peer review article published by the British Journal of Occupational Therapy and has supported the Improving Lives and Saving Money campaign launched by the Royal College of Occupational Therapists. We also carry out our own primary research to fill in any information gaps. A recent example is research we undertook to cost a dentist. Although a great deal of de data on dentists was available from NHS Digital's data sources, we wanted to include the cost of dental equipment such as chairs, dental tools and supplies. To collect this information, we ran a survey with the assistance of the General Dental Council, Department of Health and Social Care and the Chief Dental Officer for England. All this information has now enabled us to create two new schema, one for a performer-only dentist and the other for a providing performer dentist. This slide and the next shows what sort of information we include. First, the author's preface introduces you to the year's work. 
that is our guest editorials which normally focus on overarching and timely policy issues and any articles which have been commissioned especially for the volume and which discuss specific services and data collection methods. Last year's guest editorial talked about estimating medication costs for economic evaluation. Another a few years ago discussed the implications of the CARE Act on social care markets for older people. If you flick through the volumes, you will see that both guest editorials and articles cover a wide range of topics. We also include in the preface a summary of all new schema added to the report during the year and all schema which have been withdrawn from the volume due to our policy of only publishing work which is less than 10 years old. Section 1 covers services used by particular client groups and this slide lists them in chapter order. For many of the groups, we include the cost of residential care and daycare and we differentiate where possible between local authority and private sector providers. We also include more specialised services such as counselling and advocacy and adoption of foster care in the children's services chapter. Chapter 7 contains average costs for elective and non-elective hospital admissions as well as outpatient attendances and other more specialised services such as inpatient and outpatient palliative care. These have been drawn from the NHS reference costs. The costs for specialist neuro rehabilitation services, screening interventions for sexually transmitted infections and self-management programmes are also found in this chapter. Whereas our usual approach is to present the unit cost for particular services or professionals, in Chapter 8, our Care Packages chapter, the unit of interest is the individual and the combination of services they use. Examples of care packages are health care support received by people requiring mental health support and also care packages for people at the end of their lives. This year we are including some new costs for quitting smoking, social prescribing and for people with obsessive compulsive disorder. Sections 2, 3 and 4 present the costs for professionals and teams of professionals who can provide support for all client groups. They are divided in the volume according to whether staff are health or social care professionals and whether they are hospital or community based. In section 5 you will see other useful information such as inflation indices, NHS staff earning estimates, training costs and care home fees. In our two most recent unit cost volumes we have presented the cost estimates for groups of professionals on one table with a separate sheet outlining our methods and sources. This slide gives an example of how the estimates for professionals should be interpreted. First the cost put inputs are given down one side followed by working time. Then the largest red circle highlights ratios of direct to indirect time on client related work to account for the fact that care staff do not spend all their time with clients. This ratio indicates that every hour spent with a client requires 1.39 of paid hours. Using this we are able to estimate a unit cost per hour of client related work which you can see at the bottom of the page alongside the cost per working hour. The smaller circle on the page indicates where we put regional weightings if we have them. This example shows that salary costs are 10% higher in London than the average cost calculated. This slide shows the 2017 volume which can be downloaded in PDF format from the PSSRU website, either in sections or the whole volume. It contains around 170 unit costs and you can also download volumes dating back to 2003. We are gradually increasing the number of web-based resources available from the PSSRU website which can be accessed directly from the web link shown under the title. In 2017 we created a database to house all articles and editorials written for the unit cost publication since 2003. This contains a search facility that allows readers to find work for particular client groups or by focus, for example policy related or methods based. This year we've developed an um, Excel database providing the costs of all health and social care professionals found in the volume. This links the unit cost to agenda for change bans and job titles and descriptions. All pages of the database should be interpreted alongside our methods. All our blogs can also be accessed from the website. Every year we write a blog just prior to publishing online. Other blogs are written to coincide sometimes with important events such as Learning Disability a Week or Mental Health Awareness Week or to raise awareness of different information sources. 
Thank you for listening to this first uh, video presentation. If you have any questions, please contact me, Leslie Curtis, on the email address given below or my co-author, Amanda Burns. Our next video will look in more depth at our methods.